YouTube, what's going on? I'm super excited for this video because we are talking about porosity and you guys are so interested in this topic because you guys are realizing that the products that you use, the performance of it, is really based off of the porosity of your hair. So in this video, we are gonna be talking about if you really are high porosity or are you low porosity? What are some external factors that you are doing on a daily basis that could be affecting the porosity of your hair and what are some weekly or monthly things that you could be doing in your regimen to maintain a healthy porosity? So with that being said, stay tuned. Okay, so when it comes to if you are high porosity or low porosity, I know there's like different tests that you can do, like little water tests and all that. That can be effective, but then for some people, it just, it, it's, it's kind of fickle to be honest with you. For me, I always recommend people, they're trying to figure out what they are, I would say wet your hair completely, like completely saturate your hair. If it takes a long time for your hair to get dry, meaning like your hair is still air drying and it's the next day, more than likely you are low porosity. If you wet your hair and your hair dries really quick, more than likely, you are high porosity. If your hair gets really frizzy a lot, like really easy, you are high porosity. Now, me personally, I feel like you can have healthy high porosity hair, and you can also have healthy low porosity hair. It's all about figuring out what works and what doesn't work and how you can maintain that moisture level so your hair can thrive. Now, when it comes to those external factors, there are some things that we do on a daily basis that can affect the porosity of our hair. Now, if you already have high porosity, believe it or not, you can experience even more lifting of the cuticle, which can lead to even more protein loss, which is something that you do not want. And for low porosity hair, for us, it's more so of a prevention method to make sure that our cuticles do not become lifted. So one of the external factors that we do sometimes on a daily basis is how we maintain our hair combing and brushing. I always tell people when you are detangling, combing, brushing your hair, never do it when you are in a rush. Never do it when you are upset because more than likely you're gonna be rushing through it, going rough, you know, all of that and that affects the outer layer of the hair, AKA the cuticle. Also, if you use heat a lot, be sure to use a heat protectant. Ideally, the best heat protectants are gonna be ones that have silicones within them because silicone does a great job at protecting the hair from excessive amounts of heat. Another external factor that can affect the porosity of our hair is the products that we use. Number one, our shampoo. Shampoos tend to have cleansing surfactants within them. The more harsh the cleansing surfactant, the more stripping it will make our hair feel. Now what happens is when these cleansing surfactants are removing the dirt and the oil off of our cuticle, there is a lifting that gradually takes place. So choosing like a gentle cleansing surfactant or even a gentle shampoo would be ideal. Co-washing will not effectively cleanse your hair as it's supposed to, so I always recommend using an actual shampoo. And I will share the ones that I do recommend below in the description box. And of course, there's relaxers and there's even color services that are taking place. These are chemical services that have relatively a high pH. And anytime you have a formula with a high pH, meaning something like seven and up, eight and up, et cetera, et cetera, it is automatically going to lift the cuticle and even protein loss. So if you do decide to get a relaxer or if you decide to get some color services done, make sure they are done by a professional or if you really know what you're doing, make sure that you really know what you're doing and also be sure to use a protein treatment. Make sure your hair is strong enough to take those chemical services. So those are the external factors. Now on the internal factors, of course you guys already know, hyper fatigue, where our hair absorbs too much moisture, it actually swells the hair shaft, lifts the cuticle, and that can lead to protein loss and high porosity hair as well. So this is where pre-pooing comes into play to help to prevent that. Now as far as solutions go, I'm a huge fan of apple cider vinegar rinses because they actually do an amazing job at sealing the cuticle and making sure that your hair is at the correct pH balance, which is typically between 4.5 and 5.5. So ACD rinses maybe once every two weeks or once a month for your hair would be ideal. And actually you would feel a difference immediately after washing it out. And for those who like to create their own products at home, like water-based products, like moisturizers, conditioners, that's completely okay. Just make sure the pH of these formulas that you're making are ideal and align it with the hair pH. You wanna make sure that you're not creating something where the 
pH is like crazy high because that will totally, definitely affect your hair. All right guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new. I do have a question for you. Are you high porosity or low porosity? And if you are high porosity, what is one thing that has helped your high porosity hair? And if you are low porosity, what's that one thing that has helped your low porosity hair? Comment below and I look forward to joining the conversation with you. Thank you guys for getting the Curly Girls Guide to Hair Care Ingredients. If you haven't done so already, I will have the link below for you to check out. And if you are interested in starting a hair care line, you can work with me one-on-one. -on -one. I will have a link below for you as well. All right, guys. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.